Some Planeswalkers in Magic the Gathering are old fan favorites, some of the first ever printed with storied pasts and origins that help to define what Planeswalkers are in the modern lore of MTG. Yet we are in the wake of a new generation of Planeswalkers, some of which have taken on the mantle of pivotal characters we follow throughout the multiverse, sometimes even replacing and filling the roles of other beloved characters. Such is the case with the green mana aligned Planeswalker Vivian Reed, who looks to continue her development in Ikoria, Lair of Behemoths. Let's discuss where this character's story stands, where it could lead, and if they can really be a replacement for the original Green Planeswalker, Nyssa Ravain. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Simon bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Today, we're discussing Vivian Reed, her story, and her potential involvement in Ikoria Lair of Behemoths. If you haven't seen this jammed in one of your random packs of Theros Beyond Death, Wizards of the Coast have leaked out some box art for Ikoria, which confirms that yes, Vivian Reed will be involved in that plane's story. We also know from an interview with Mark Rosewater that the plane will have a few planeswalkers we're familiar with, one of which being Vivian, and another brand new planeswalker which we can only really speculate on. So Vivian Reed is confirmed for Ikoria, but what's the state of her development? How could it impact the story of this new plane? Now I have covered the origin story of Vivian Reed in a previous video. If you'd like a more in-depth refresher, you can go check out the annotation on the screen, which should be up now, or find the link in the description below. But in short, Vivian Reed is from a plane known as Scala, but don't count on us visiting it anytime soon because it was destroyed years ago by none other than Nicol Bolas. This set up a pretty mysterious past for Vivian, who uses an artifact known as the Arc Bow, which stores the spiritual essence of the animals native to Scala, and she even adds to the collection with other animals she encounters in her planeswalking adventures. This was the gist of her origins, but so much more has been added since the War of the Spark and the follow-up novel, Forsaken. So what's happening with Vivian Reed? Well first, we're given more of her origins, and a more fleshed out idea of what her home plane Scala was like. It was actually a deeply divided world between the champions of progress and industry, and the sacred serene wild forest with their protectors. The plane has a very similar vibe to Ravnica or even Eldraine, where there's this ongoing conflict between the natural and advanced civilizations. Much like on Ravnica, the majority of Scala is an advanced civilization known as Nura, and it sort of circles an ever dwindling forest area inhabited by the Smaragdi. I'm sure I butchered it, but Vivian's a member of this group. This mirrors the dichotomy Ravnica has with the Gruul clans. And just like the Gruul, Vivian and Smaragdi fought back as best they could on the encroaching civilized world that threatened their wild lands. The Nura, which is a civilization I prefer because the name is easier to pronounce, weren't just civil engineers. They were powerful archmages with machines of progress and war. They steamrolled over the wilds and their defenses. Vivian was a part of a losing battle, but still she and her people fought on best they could. Yet all of this was moot the second Nicol Bolas caught wind of potentially beneficial technology the Nura were crafting on Scala. The day he arrived on that plane, Scala was doomed. Nicol Bolas pillaged the technologically advanced Nura, who in response fought back against the tyrannical dragon planeswalker, but it wasn't enough. Even after Bolas stole what he came for, that in and of itself is never revealed, but we assume it has something to do with his plans for the War of the Spark, the dragon decides to wipe Scala clean simply for defending themselves. The Nurans now were on the losing side, as Bolas laid waste to their homes and cities. They escaped to the relative safety of the wilds. At a time like this, with Scala literally crumbling apart, there was no sense in fighting among themselves, so the Nura and Vivian's people joined together for a final stand to save their world. Using the magical prowess and technology of the Nura, paired with the Judaic spells of the Smaragdi, they crafted the Arcbow. This powerful weapon harnessed the life force of all living things that had ever lived on Scala. Believing this could be enough to at least force Bolas to flee, the bow was given to the best shot on the plane, Vivian Reed. 
However, the end of their world would come much quickly than anyone could ever anticipate, with Scala being torn apart shortly after the bow was created. Bolas wasn't even close enough to attempt a retaliation. Instinctively, as her world crumbled, Vivian Reed's spark ignited and she plans walked away for the first time, taking the arc bow with her, knowing that Nicol Bolas had just killed her world. From there, Vivian Reed went out into the multiverse, carrying the remaining essence of her world within the Arc Bow, but also adding to that collection of spirits other impressive beasts she encountered on her journey. Most notably, she stopped by Ixalan to pick up some massive dinosaur spirits to add a little power behind her shots with the bow. Vivian Reed is motivated as a character by a few different things, the first of which is her desire to protect nature and wildlife. When she quote unquote captures the spirit of an animal, it's an act to preserve that creature's essence, to have them fight and defend others that it can no longer do in its life. Adding to that, at least before the War of the Spark, her primary motivation was vengeance. She wanted to be the one specifically to kill Nicol Bolas, and on Ravnica she almost had her chance, but her role in that war would go on to be more of a supportive one that would add to the fall of the Dragon Planeswalker. In War of the Spark, Vivian Reed was lured and trapped on Ravnica thanks to Bolas' plan and the Immortal Sun which prevented planeswalkers from escaping the plane. Though she was unfamiliar with Ravnica, Vivian caught wind of Bolas and believed that this was her chance to avenge Scala and her people. But luckily she was first confronted by other planeswalkers before charging headforth to her own death. She did manage to take out a number of Eternals though, the army of Bolas, so she certainly left her mark in the battle. As the heroes, the planeswalkers, and the guild leaders of Ravnica got together to plan their counterattack and defense against Bolas, Vivian Reed was assigned to a special mission work with others to kill Liliana Vess. Yes, Liliana Vess, the necromancer and former planeswalker of the Gatewatch, who, unbeknownst to basically everyone else, was conscripted by Bolas to lead his eternal army. She did so against her will under penalty of death, while still suddenly defying and hurting the campaign of Bolas from the inside. However, from the outside, it looked as if Liliana was just working for Bolas to destroy Ravnica, so a task force was created to take her out, and playing point was the best shot in the multiverse. Vivian Reed. Her group was made up of herself, Jace Balaran, Tafiri, and Jaya Ballard. Jace was a close, very personal former friend of Liliana's. He wanted to speak with her telepathically to see if he could end this madness with a mental strike. Tafiri was playing support, prepared to slow time in any situation, while Jaya and Vivian were the strikers, using fire and arrows enhanced with spiritual beasts to land a killing blow on Liliana. Plans, however, didn't go as they hoped. Finding their target leading the Dreadhorde, the group stationed themselves on a tall building, perfect for sniping without being detected. The presence of Bolas and the use of the chain veil by Liliana assured Jace's mental magic to be blocked. So, the assassination was on. Tafiri started by creating a slow time bubble around Liliana, leaving a massive delay between her possible reactions and defenses. She was slow to protect herself, slow to summon zombies in retaliation. It was time to strike. Jaya and Vivian let loose a torrent of fire and arrows that rained down on the helpless necromancer. Spiritual cats and bears charged with the arrows biting and clawing. Despite the slow time bubble, the innate spirits housed in the chain veil came to the defense of their master, almost like a reflex. Still, Liliana sustained significant damage. Had the assault continued, she surely would have died. But the commotion grabbed the attention of Bolas himself, who came to the defense of his newest tool, toppling the very building the group was using for positioning. Vivian and the others fell, surely to their deaths, if it wasn't for the quick spellcasting of Tafiri, who slowed their falls and saved their lives. In truth, it was lucky that this group failed, for if Vivian managed to kill Liliana Vess, the Necromancer would have never been able to turn the tables on her master, and Bolas could have actually won. Luckily, we know how War of the Spark turned out, and while Vivian didn't cast the arrow that would end the life of Bolas, she did manage to help in his downfall. But after the War of the Spark, there's still more work to be done. Clean up of the loose ends, partners of Bolas who must be brought to justice. 
Vivian, for one, believes personally that Liliana Vess and her chain veil are an existential threat to the multiverse. Perhaps a little salty for her failing in her mission and killing her, but believing strongly that her unnatural means leaves her as an evil which should be snuffed out. Vivian made her voice heard in a follow-up meeting between the Planeswalkers and the Guildmasters on Ravnica, and they agreed to send an agent to kill Liliana Vess. However, Vivian Reed was not that agent, actually offering to help another Planeswalker, Vraska, in her mission to kill Dovin Bon, another accomplice of Bolas. Being a master tracker, Vraska used Vivian to get them to Dovin's house on his home plane of Kaladash, and although it appeared that he was there for some time, Dovin was no longer staying there and his trail ran cold. It seemed Dovin had escaped Kaladash altogether, and Vivian couldn't track him across the countless planes of the multiverse. With that, Vivian Reed's mission was over on Ravnica. It's a strange conclusion where she did indeed help the heroes of the multiverse fight back against Bolas, but she did certainly fail in the two missions she was assigned to. Though that could have been to the benefit of the story, it still leaves us feeling like we want more from Vivian Reed. Luckily, we won't have to wait too long to see this character's story develop further, as she will be appearing in Ikoria, Lair of Behemoths. As I stated earlier, one of Vivian's main motivations as a character was vengeance against Bolas. Now that Bolas is gone, what else is Vivian fighting for? We know she cares about the fauna of worlds, and building up the Arkbow is important to fighting any threats she finds to the wilds of planes that she visits. This leads us perfectly to a world like Ikoria. As the name of the set suggests, Ikoria is filled with giant behemoths. Beasts of uncalculable size and strength, all of which would make powerful collections to her arsenal. But from what we know about Vivian, it's not that she's there on Ikoria just to collect them all, like some wayward Pokemon master. There has to be something there threatening these creatures in the balance of the wilds. From her past, we can guess it's a civilized race, perhaps pushing the wilds to the brink of extinction. It would be the perfect expansion on Vivian's development. So that's a lot of lead-in for Vivian Reed, a mono-green planeswalker who looks to be a strong candidate for a main character in the MTG storyline. But what about the OG green planeswalker, the original Gatewatch member, Nyssa Ravain? Has her story really come to an end? Would it leave an opening for Vivian to fill that role? I can go more in depth with Nissa's story and post-War the Spark exploits in another video. There's a lot of stuff going on between Nissa and Chandra we gotta discuss. But Nissa's decline as the de facto green planeswalker in the story has been occurring for some time now. Yes, she has appeared in almost every set involving the Gatewatch, but internal conflict between the group led to the division which, lore-wise, would be hard to bridge. The first sign of a fracture is the group's alliance with Liliana Vess, when that character first joins the Gatewatch. Nyssa is adamantly opposed to this as she cannot trust the Necromancer. In War of the Spark, Nyssa feels vindicated in her suspicions in what seemingly was the villainous rise of Liliana, but the real fallout came with the souring of her relationship with Chandra Nalar. Let's not beat around the bush, Chandra and Nyssa were a thing. People shipped them hard, and there was clearly something simmering between these two characters. However, recently in War of the Spark and Forsaken, that ship has sailed. It's written explicitly that their relationship was never really anything, and it won't ever be a thing again. This concluded in a saddened goodbye between Chandra and Nyssa. With those two major rifts, and the effective end of the Gatewatch, Nyssa has left a Zendikar, her home plane, and she may have left the MTG story, at least for a while, as well. Now the real question becomes, with Vivian Reed showing up in Ikoria, Lair of Behemoths, and a planned return to Zendikar coming shortly after, who will come out as the main green mana protagonist for Magic the Gathering? If Nyssa shows up in the next planned Zendikar block, the chance of this character's resurgence is real, but could Vivian really replace her with her role in Ikoria? Oh, and let's not forget, Garrick Wildspeaker has just been freed from his curse for the first time in a decade. With his adventure in Throne of Eldraine, Garrick also is a possible candidate for Mono Green Planeswalker of the Gatewatch and the MTG storyline. But I'll leave that question to you guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Anyway guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked it and want to show support for the channel, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and of course, tick the notification bell so you never miss out on a new video's release. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, see ya!